can you introduce yourself? Uh, bonjour. Uh, my name is uh, Charlie Baxter Sr. de Je and uh, I was born in 1950, November 24, on the shores of Albany River on a trap line called Makuka Batten Lake. And, uh, our final name is Baxter. And uh, I had five siblings and four other brothers, and like ten, ten of us in our family. The Baxters had uh, four brothers and three sisters. There's a big family, mm -hmm. the Baxter family. And the parents were Josephine and George Baxter. And uh, they were owned in their trap line all their lives. And that's where I was uh, raised, on the trap line. <clears throat> um, do you have a personal story from your experience in the community? Here in the community, uh, I was a young lad. Uh, I came to the community in 1970. I was in high school in Geraldton. And uh, Easter break was in place, and the, and the band member named uh, Evelyn David Tabin bought me uh, to the consul here to visit. And then, so uh, I did that. It was a one week break, week, and then we kept the that's how I kept the no consul sleep. And then within that week, uh, I didn't know no families here. But I ran into uh, the Stevens family. Alex Steven, the Bennett, the, the families, they had a lot of daughters and uh, sons. And, and I met the, the brother in law, Donald Wesley, his name was Jemima. They, they put me up. They put as if, as if I knew them. As if they knew me, as if fate. Fate came and played. And then I stayed with them for one week. They looked after me. They looked after me, and I went back. Back to school. Then uh, I came back here in uh, in '83, and then I, I married a band member here in the Roman family. And uh, <clears throat> and the experience I had through, so, uh, in order to be a, a a member of the community, you have to be a band member, and you, you had to get voted in. I didn't know that. I was going to meetings here, general meetings, and you know I I didn't know the I guess the background, the authority, the jurisdiction, the relationship of how the politics were. And I was uh, told I couldn't speak. I had to be a band member. Oh, so uh, I asked the chief. The chief was Bentley Chicho at that time. Oh, there was about 60 plus people in, the, in, in, in that meeting. So I said, oh, in that case, uh, I'll, I said, how do I be a band member? The people will vote you in, the chief says. I said, okay then, let's ask the people to, if I can come in the reserve, because uh, technically I'm, Martin, I'm from Martin Falls First Nations, but I never lived in Martin Falls First Nations. It was just uh, where uh, the background of uh, my family were. Because at that time, uh, on the treaty time, you were at your dad's treaty number. You didn't, you wasn't, you didn't have your own, like today, you have your own number, treaty number. So uh, the chief says, okay, who wants Charlie here to be a band member? Pause. Nobody puts their hand up. Nobody. Oh, the chief. And then the chief, and the chief says, okay, who doesn't want him here? I look around. Nobody, nobody puts their hand. So I told the chief, it's a tie. <laughs> you, you, you want to break the tie? He said, no, Gary, Gary, no, no, Gary, hey, Gary. It means wait. He asked the people again. So uh, he asked me, okay, we're going to ask you, who wants Charlie here? First, I talked a little bit. Then when I started to mention my dad and the brothers and my grandfather, they want to know who I was. Oh, I said, okay, we know, we know he's from that family. So they all raised their hands. I looked, they all raised, and, and nobody said no. That's how it came to be in the community. And that's how the, the system that's how the system was. So I became part of the community. So, and, and today, I'm still here. Okay. 
What's important for the community? What a community. It's very important is that to know each other. We ought to respect each other, you know, have good relations and uh, understand each other, the people in the community at large, and uh, have good management and have good leadership and have participation and have the programs that will work for Anishinaabe people in the community from the government to be recognized. And then saying that, uh, you have to know the growth of the community, you know, your population and the needs, because we have needs. There are a lot of obstacles in the barriers, in the person is that are technically outlawed really by the government, you know, it's, it's amazing. What's in the content of the Indian Act that brought us today? With that, that Indian Act, in order for us to survive, to have a state ability, you know, and uh, to be self governed self-governance, we have to get rid of the Indian Act somehow and uh, get the resources that us First Nation communities across Canada to be given because it's part of our right, our inherent right to have those resources. With that, we can self-sustain uh, to build what we need. For example, uh, as you go around, you see friendship centers in the municipalities. How come there's none in, in reservations? Because the federal government won't fund them. You know, just same thing with the, uh, you know, you need a new ban office. Believe it or not, again, the government won't fund that. We have to get our own money to build it. You know, it took years, for example, the school. It took a while. It took a while. Lots of red tape. And then the funny part of this, uh, in order for the community, where sisters, we have to have the right funding formula. We don't have the funding formula. Believe it or not, we were capped on our funding program for 35 years plus. It was supposed to be lifted when our new Prime Minister, Prime Minister Trudeau came in place, but I don't know if we lifted that 2% cap. I don't know if it still exists or removed. That way we were supposed to get more funding. But then again, I don't know if the cash flow formula floated to the, to the First Nations. You know, it's, uh, and uh, we have to have, uh, I guess, our own uh, development. You know, uh, we will be part uh, of the uh, the export. The ex you know, the proponents that can explore in our area, our territories, mining, and all that. We have to be part of that. We have to have partnerships, joint venture, or agreements in place to benefit the community. So, you know, and that, that's just the only way that all oh, these steps being recognized and to benefit the community uh, at large because Coast Lake is growing. It's growing. We need infrastructure. You know, we need a lot of development. We're, out, we're full capacity in housing here. You know, but then again, uh, the government, you speak, you speak the government of your needs. The, the government imposes First Nations, the, the FNI uh, proposal formula, FNIIP it's called, to determine your needs, and they don't fund it. It's a five-year, five-year plan, it's still, you know, you don't award it, because it's competitive out there. The funding is competitive. These announcements they make, oh man, we're given 30 million of First Nations, you know, but that doesn't mean costly First Nations is going to get the part of that 30 million because it's broken down in three phases. It's right across Canada. See, that's, 
that's the catch twenty two that for other friends don't realize. How how, the, how come we didn't get approved? Well, uh, we had other people with more need than you. Well, we we it's our need too. We're all similar. We have similar needs. We all were full capacity for the that I'm aware of here in our in our neighboring uh, first nations. They all need a lot of expansion. They need uh, water and sewer, you know, systems and you know infrastructure, housing, housing growth, uh, population overcrowded. Uh, I like to point out in my era, my generation, we were removed from uh, from homes. 150,000 of us kids were removed from, from our homes to resident school. After we were 18, some of us students never went home. I was one of those uh, survivors, 18. I couldn't go back home. I, I was on my own. The girl went to year 18, you look after yourself now. Now, the 90,000 that all turned 18 went back to their homes to their reservations. Where did they go? Yeah, they with their parents. They have no homes. They started making fun of this. And I told the government that you're the problem. You caused that problem. You took us away. You know? We had no homes when we went back to the First Nations. We had homes when we were kids. But when we grew up as adults, we had nowhere to go. That is why there's overcrowding. The, the, you cause a problem. It's not a First Nations community. You know? And then at the same time as you make a plan, they don't honor your plan. It's going to be their plan, their structure, in order to get funding. That's, uh, that is how the government is. You know, we, we bark, we bark, we bark, but somebody has to listen to that. Down the line, I hope, you know, because it's constantly continuous, continuing. But you don't realize it's uh, competitive. Well, what we do is competitive. And then for the school itself alone, there was a shortfall. You know, constantly put that notice it. They're short, you got short changes in the school. That's why there were deficiencies. You see the the the, the important of the community is to understand the funding formula. In any, any capital project, they have fund eighty percent. But the First Nations who has to put 20, 20 percent. Now, if, if a building you, you want to construct is worth 20 million, and 80 percent of that is 16, you want to put 4 million, for cause our capital funding is only what, uh, uh, 250, how are, you, how are you going to do it? You have to advance your capital for 10 years and then you have no capital. See? That's what they do. You advance in the next 10 years, you want no cover of money. Look at that's, that, that's the way it is. That's just the way it is. You know, but you know, then we, we, I believe we need an activist on First Nations, Aboriginal, to deal with all First Nations. You know? so same thing with this uh, in the community, this water issue, that uh, warm water, okay? Well, why don't they have a group? Uh, a board, our virtual water board, to deal with this. And the government to fund it well, for each First Nation. But then again, why? I don't know why they don't. And then the, one, the most important thing is the funding, like I'm saying, well, the funding formula is uh, the growth, okay? The government only puts stats on the population of the reserve, not the officers. They don't fund the officers. Just, just the criteria, the, the population is. So constantly it's about, uh, say 1900, it's half its reserve, half its officer. But they don't fund the officer people in, in, in our budget here, okay? Why is that? But then again, why are they on our list? But that's stats. Oh, it costs about 1,900 people. Only eight or seven, six are 
is the criteria for faithful. <laughs> See, these are the obstacles, the barriers, the gap, you know, that uh, gap they had on the government. They, they did have a gap, 2% cap. Their, their foods are funny. For 35 years, I don't know if, they, I don't know if this new government period to look at that or not. That was one of his campaign statements anyway. So, and, uh, I don't need a lot of facilities, you know, we need to uh, improve our rink. We got a rink here and then the community hall and, I guess, and uh, the most important thing is to have access to these buildings, which we as community just are not having access. They're there, like we had a radio station, we got a community hall, we got a gymnasium, you know, we got the rink, we got the baseball fields. You got a track and field. It's all here. But we have to get on a ball and, and wake up and <laughs> you know the facilities are here. Go so, and then we need a new we need a new ban office, you know. I know that. We need a new ban office. I mean, like, it's nice to see uh, treatment uh, aftercare facilities here. Which we don't have. Then again, what's the problem? Government will recognize funding for it. It's all proposal driven. That's. Uh, I mean, I think I'll, think I'll stop there. <laughs> what advice can you give youth today regarding education and preserving culture at the same time? Today, you know, it's amazing. Like, understanding, I guess, the, the environment, the change that we have. In my youth, my young days, like the, what's present today, uh, as your generation, we never had. Okay? Us, in our, in, in our generation, uh, we got up. We, had, we went to work, you know, we had to provide, but today there's so much regulation, there's so much legislation, there's so much rights that the youth have that you know, they want to do what they want to do. It's your choice, but then again, there's life to live. The youth today are going to put away these uh, toys. <laughs> you know these toys? You know, that it's, it's, a wreck, it's a wreck in their lives. To me, it's, it's not making them motivated. You know, so as of today, my God, graduate, you dig it up, they grab that thing, with a bit, they still have it. Well, anyway, today the youth have to know their purpose. They got to know that the progress they have to know they're the future leaders of our community. They have to know the programs that are, and, and the proponents, uh, the exploration that's coming to our, our community. They have to be on top of this, and uh, it should be taught in the school. You know, it should be addressed so the youth will understand. You know, this is what's happening. What we, we have got to do, you know, we're going to wake up here and then. Then they have to, uh, the youth have to use these facilities that we have today in our First Nations here constantly. The rinks, uh, the baseball fields, the community hall, you know, and uh, our gymnasium to do their uh, fundraising drives, you know, to get involved. All they have to do is ask and have and promote a leader, a coordinator to lead the youth. They're going to trust each other. They're going to work together. Uh, you know, they, today they, you know, the, they have to go to school because uh, today in education everything is technical. You, you gotta, you gotta know. It. Like me, I, I'm not, not like me. Like I say, I, I didn't know. I'm not very good in technology. I, I never had that. Eh? See, I never had that. But today you guys, just go on, man. It's, you're on the ball. You know, you see that? See a difference? The difference in, in the environment, the change, that's a change. You, you gotta go with the change. I, 
I believe that. I believe in change. But you're going to fit in. We have to fit in our youth. have to get involved. They're going to participate. You know, and then uh, there should be a youth council in our community. To begin with, there should be a youth council. But then again, what is the obstacle? There's no funding for the youth. There's no funding for the youth here, you know, to do their activities, you know, to, for a coordinator, you know, to, to establish the youth. And uh, I guess what, what, if I was coordinator, you know, go to community and uh, house to house to see what youth are out here. No, the, popul the population, the youth, the growth. And then write them letters. Hey, who, who don't this kid? Can you please come out and get what they're interested? Then that way, and then you form that team, you know, to function. It's out there. All you want to do is just promote it and understand the process. What to participate, you know, and to build have good relationships, you know, and work together. It's out there. Well, what do is be mobile and get get a support from the, I guess the, your your mom and dad, your parents, you know, and uh, then the leadership, the leader uh, with the leadership in place of Con Lake to have one counselor to participate, to coordinate, and then to work with the youth and the management, you know, because you got to know financials too. You know, all in, in this field, you know, it's a uh, way. I don't know, is good.